Hello, I finally written down my Tufty Tarantula pattern and I'm making it available for free so everybody can do it. Um, I have the written pattern hopefully in the bottom of this video. I don't know how well that'll work but failing that it will be on my blog just to get it up and somewhere, somewhere safe. <laughs> So I just wanted to make this video to go over a couple of points that are in the pattern that maybe are better described in video than in photos. Um, I don't know if it will be particularly useful for anyone, but I also wanted to show off all my tarantulas. <laughs> there are many. Um, so before I do the showing off, I want to show you the importance of fluffing the spider. So I've made this one, which is all fluffed, and then I've made this one, and this is what he looks like without any fluffing. He's still quite cute, you can tell he's been crocheted, but he doesn't have as much personality, and he doesn't have the added tuft. Real tarantulas obviously don't have a tuft, but <clears throat> I find the tuft very important for maximum cuteness. Also, tarantulas without, like, fuzzy fangs just don't look the same, do they? So, yes, I just wanted to show you the comparison. This is the exact same pattern. And, um, yes, fluffing makes a difference. Now, to fluff the yarn, what you're going to use is a little bit a little bit of sticky, the sticky side of Velcro. That's the best thing to use. You can also use things like pet combs and whatnot, but um, the most efficient thing, especially for something small, is going to be uh, just a little bit of Velcro and you can stick it, stick it, stick it like a stippling kind of um, action <laughs> or you can comb it and I find that both methods together give you the best effect because you stick it to make it make all the fibers come up and then you comb it and you can get the directionality which is quite nice. You will also notice that when you do the fluffing you're going to have long bits that just uh, the fibers come away easier and you can just trim those up that's fine like he's got a bit of a fluffy foot here that I could maybe trim back anyway I'll get on to the pattern points I wanted to to make um, the first thing is the knees now you see that they, they have bent legs but there's no wires involved they've just got a knee and it's probably easier for me to show you on a leg that hasn't been sewn on yet. So you've got the foot end and the spit's long and then kind of the thigh end and you've got a knee and the knee is basically like if you, excuse me, if you can imagine putting a heel on a sock. So what you're doing is you're making a flap and then changing the directionality of the crochet. That's all. Um, so you'll see in the pattern it goes from rounds because amigurumi has often worked in rounds and this is certainly and the legs are just six 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 and then you get to row uh, round rather five and you start going to rows and there's three rows with uh, chains and turns now that's to make your flap for your knee and I've got one here where I've done that and you can see that there is indeed a flap and then what you do is you've obviously you've got the three one two three and your four five six is along the bottom here so to start round six you're just taking this and going one two three and then joining up here for four five six and that will make your um bend and then it'll kind of look like this and it's going to be really tight and really weird looking and you're going to think oh that doesn't look right um but just trust me, if you keep counting your six stitches and making sure they're there, um, it will all turn out exactly the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> or exactly the way it's supposed to. So that's the one thing I wanted to show you with the knee. Um, the other thing was I talk about sewing on a leg unit. And that um, is all the legs sewn together. So you take the flat side where it's been pinched together because as I, I mentioned in the pattern you pinch them together vertically rather than horizontally 
So and that's so that they'll all just pinch together like this and then you take the tail on the one leg that I uh, tell you to leave and you just go back and forth and kind of skewer the legs together back and forth a few times and then you get a nice leg unit and this is so much better than trying to sew eight individual legs onto this tiny little cephalothorax okay because that's going to line up perfectly with one of the sides and because this is done in fours uh, it's basically like a fat little cube so it's going to um line up perfectly and it'll be really easy. When you sew this on you're going to want to sew along the top and flip it over and sew along the bottom as well to get a nice firm attachment. So that's what I mean by leg unit. Um, so obviously you do that twice to get your two leg units for eight legs each. Um, I know it's not the most anatomically correct spider but you definitely need your eight legs. <laughs> And the fangs. The fangs are another thing I wanted to go over. Now, when they're not fluffed, they look like... That's not it. That's the one that's not So Okay, look at this. So that's it. Okay, that's your fang. And it actually ends up with a nice natural curve. So obviously as it's curving down, that's where you line it up on the face. So it's curved down as fangs are. Um, this is a really good technique for amigurumi if you're wanting to do like little spikes on anything as well, which is quite cool. Now I'll show you what it looks like before you sew it all together because the patterns are maybe a bit confusing to someone who's not done it before. So you're doing this um, as a chain two and then you go up in the rows and you increase and it turns into this lovely little flat wedge. So what you're doing is you're pinching the sides together. <clears throat> and you just sew that up with your tail then you tuck in the this bit last the point of the fang and that can give you a nice shape and then you keep your the tail that you use to sew it all up um well you you're ending here because you're sewing this way to this way but then you just carry it through and you can use that to sew it to the face so that's great for fangs. Now, what else do I want to tell you? Well, the eyes. I like to use glass beads or stone beads. And that's because you get this lovely reflection off them, which brings a lot of life to your little critter. Um, plastic beads are fine, but they're going to scuff and they're not going to have as nice a shine to them. Um, as glass beads or stone beads. These are actually jet, I think, beads or obsidian or something. I don't know. They're stone. They're stone beads that I, I specifically bought for my amigurumi because I like the shine of them. They bring more life to my creations than plastic beads do. But I have plastic beads as well. I mean, they're useful. Uh, but I can definitely see the difference between plastic and stone or glass beads and it's a personal preference of mine so yeah uh the last couple of things i wanted to say are um as you can see i, I use a two millimeter hook for this so that it's it's pretty much life-sized it's a life-size adult kind of tarantula hand-sized right um you can scale the pattern if you want to um, I started and I just didn't like it. I didn't like it bigger. I like him tiny. I think the, the bends in the legs work really well because you don't have to stuff them or anything. Um, at this size, if you scaled it up, you might have to stuff the legs and that could really straighten them out and lose that whole effect with the knees. But I mean, it's up to you. You're absolutely welcome to do anything you want with this, um, pattern for your own personal uses. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And, uh, here you can see I've got this, the pink ones, but I've made very many, very many. Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to discuss. Oh, look at them all. There's green ones, blue ones, red ones. One more thing I wanted to discuss is this fluffy yarn that I use for the tufts. 
Now there's a few different ways you can make tufts. Now as you can see this is essentially like teddy fur. I don't know if you can see like it's just like really thin skinny strips of teddy fur. It's called yarn. It's very well, it's expensive for what it is. I don't see the point in trying to make anything with it because I'd need so much of it to make something. <laughs> but I really like using it to like sew on to things to, for effects. So this is what I used for their, their hair tufts. And as you can see, not having the hair tuft really d just changes the whole appeal, the whole face. Um, so it's good to have. Uh, there's a few different ways you can do this though. So if you have teddy fur, you can obviously just cut a patch of that and sew it on. You can use the a fluff, some kind of fluffy tufty yarn. But if you don't have fluffy tufty yarn or teddy bear fur, um, just take some of the black yarn, which you already have because you've made black pieces. Take a bit of Velcro, comb out those fibers with the Velcro until you've got a nice little mass of fibers. Use a felting needle and poke it in. And there you got your tuft. Okay? It's not going to be as durable as other methods, but it will be cute. This little guy's very green. Um, so this is the last one I wanted to show off. And to give it more of a tarantula look, you can also do color changes on the legs. Just to show you that I did it and I didn't fluff his bum but see they look they look good in all sorts of ways but I really like this one with his color changes now the color changes are going to look absolutely terrible until you use the velcro to fluff the fibers okay so don't try to make it neat don't even try to make the rows join up um if you're doing color changes, just experiment. I did this freehand, so I can't tell you exactly what I did, but I can tell you that it looked absolutely atrocious before I um, fluffed it and that it looked great. So it's worth the effort, but there's so many ends to weave in. That's why I've only got the one. So yes, these are my tarantulas. Do as many color changes as you want. I find black plus a color works best. I also think that yarn with a bit of a speckle to it looks best. Um, this is just a plain yarn. And he's fine, but I think that you just get a better kind of... I don't know. It appeals to my eyeballs more when there's a bit of variation in the yarn. So yeah, just knock yourself out. You are welcome to use this pattern for free, but um, don't redistribute my pattern or sell my pattern. You can sell your creations if you want to within the legal limits of wherever you are, but don't sell my pattern. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.